Look, Mum, I farted and got on. <laughs> out you go. No, I was just going to be in there for half an hour. Yeah, you can go out. Yeah, you can move, because I'm going to be talking about like ducks, that's just that. Who's that? Oh, Sarah. Oh, hey, look at Vera. Hi, guys. Hello. Right, you two out now. Bye-bye. Love you, goodbye. Yeah, love you. Goodbye, Mason. So, hello. Just wait for some others to join. Who's Katie Clark? Look, Katie, that's Katie. She oh, said, hello, Sky. Hi. <laughs> hello, Sarah. <laughs> right. Bedtime, please, a pair of you. <laughs> right, I'm just waiting for Colin to come on as well. One of his girls, can you te text him and tell him to come on? No, you haven't enough. Yes, but it's this one. <laughs> so we'll wait for some others to come on before we start. Who else is in their pyjamas? Anyone else in their pyjamas? Look at mine, Lady in the Tramp. <laughs> Oh, nice one, Katie and Tracy. So, let's see. Um, afraid not as I still need to set the dogs out of their last wonder. <laughs> oh, loving it. You're in your pyjamas as well. Right. Let's add. Are they still alive? What, the dogs or the kids? The kids are because Dan's dealing with them. Yeah the, yeah, the kid's still here. Oh, if you ask Ali to um, join the group, then she will be able to just play. Oh, so now what's that group? Tracy, can you text Colin for me? so that I can bring him on, because I can't see him watching. Oh, thank you, Sarah. So we're gonna be talking tonight about um, cheerleaders or competition and how we view other professionals and actually how they can be our biggest cheerleaders. I'm also gonna have a little bit about mental health and how your cheerleaders really help with that as well. Wait a second. Right, I love you, good night. So I'm just trying to work out, because I've done it before where I bought someone on camera and Tracy, can I get you to um, see if Colin's actually logged on to this? Oh, here we go. What did you say? Look. 
there will be an option at the bottom where it, you can sometimes request to join and I can see viewers that I can add but it's not letting me add you unfortunately I'll keep trying so um I will start talking then and hopefully I can bring Colin on in a little bit. Um, so a little bit about me. I own Walkies with Una and we've got a team of five other ladies as well that work with us. Um, ranging from dog walkers. Um, one of our ladies is a dog trainer. We've got another lady that I'm hoping in the next few years will be a dog trainer as well because she shows so much great potential. And I like, really like the way that she works. Um, and when we can bring him on, we've got Colin as well, who owns Colin's Canine Training Services. Um, and he is a behavioral consultant. He works with the, I, um, the ISCP um, and Interdogs. He has also become my mentor without, um, I don't think he realised he was going to, but he's become my mentor. He's the person that helped get me onto the courses that I wanted to do and that were beneficial to me um, and that would help me grow as a person. He's also the person that I can go to when I go, oh my God, I'm a bit stuck on something. Can you help? Um, so cheerleaders are not competition. It's really easy to look at what other companies and other businesses or individuals are doing and think, oh my God, I wanna be just like them and almost trying to compete with them. And I have taken a very different approach to viewing other professionals in the industry. Um, and it was all thanks to um, a colleague and who has become a really good friend of mine, Katie Clark from Canine and Feline. When I first started a few years ago, I'll say a few years ago, was it 2017, I think, um, Katie reached out to me really nicely, said hi, and um, we got talking a little bit, and it was Katie that helped me learn how to do my taxes. It was Katie that helped me look through contracts and things. Um, it was Katie that explained the different types of businesses go with, um, like business registrations and how to do things. Um, she showed me a way to actually look at other professionals in the industry and how they could become very beneficial to us rather than competition. They're our cheerleaders. So, I mean, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Katie. Sorry, I hope you don't mind Katie. Um, but I'm gonna talk quite a lot about Katie here because she really did open my eyes and show me that there was these other people are not competition. We can actually work together really well. So um, one of the things that we've got in our local area is we've got a local WhatsApp group for the business professionals. And, oh, I don't know how many, how many people are in there, Katie? I can't, it's, it's on this phone, I can't look. Um, but there's quite a lot of us in there. There's over, I'm not sure there's over 20 of us. Um, and we've got a really good working relationship. All the different businesses, they're very different to each other. They've all got their own little um, niches, if you like. They all work slightly differently. So our company, for instance, although we do dog walking, we don't do big group walks. We might take one, two, or very rarely a three out together. Um, other people might take six. I don't do boarding, Katie does. Oh, there's 24 of us in there. Um, and so obviously with 24 different business owners, you're gonna have different ways of working your businesses. You're gonna have very different views. So there's lots of people in there that I can be friends with and I can respect them as business owners, but I may not do things the way that they would do. And just as they would probably look at me and go, well, I wouldn't do it like that. And that's okay. We don't all have to do it the same. And if we do all do it the same, then it's gonna be quite, boring out there we're not gonna be able to offer our clients the very best by having this network of people it means that we can offer our clients the very best so if I've got a client for instance a lot of mine if they if they need a border I offer them over to uh, straight away like, oh, I've got the perfect person for you Katie if Katie can't do it there'll be another person that I can recommend if I've got someone who wants more of a group walk for the dogs I've got other people that I can recommend to Ah, 
Right, why can't he join? Let me see if I can bring him on yet. It's letting, I could add Liz, I could add Carly Clark, I could add Sarah Harmon, but it's not letting me add you, Colin. Hmm. I don't know why it's not letting me add you. Um, I'll let someone else, I don't know how to, how to add you. I don't know if Ruby can help at all. Um, while well, I let someone work it out, I'll carry on speaking. Um, when it comes to offering these different services, it it really does help to have your clients know that you can offer them the very best. We have clients that come to us because they know that we're going to be, if I need to scale something up, if I need to pass it on to Colin, I can do so. If I need to, Liz, for instance, I'm glad your comment popped up there. Um, so Liz is a groomer and because I can trust the way that she works, then I can, if I've got a dog that I'm working with for training, I can say, Liz, can you take this one for me? Um, it also means that as a groomer, Liz knows the people that I'm working with, I am teaching them in a, in the cer in a certain way. She knows that w when you've got networks of people that can talk to each other, then you're gonna get the kind of um, feedback and the work with your clients that everyone can be working on the same thing. So if I've said, Liz knows that I teach my clients to teach their dogs to stand on cue. Liz can say to me, oh, I saw so-and-so and she was a bit nervous with this or can they need to work on X, Y, and Z. It means that we can feed that back into our lessons and make sure that we're really setting them up to succeed. Just as if I go to Liz, oh, this one's a bit head shy, this one's a bit noise reactive and so on. Um, I know that when I've got Una, oh yeah, it's funny. Um, yeah, like this is she knows when she's got one of my dogs on the table because they know how to stand. Um, I remember Colin saying to me before, oh, I know it's a client that you've seen before because they know how to do it when they do a down, they do a chin on the on the settle mat, they do a chin down as well. Um, this relationship is, I said, it's very easy for us to go, oh but so-and-so's got this many clients or so-and-so's doing that. When we're doing that, we see a very small part of the business. You're seeing what they want you to see. And we don't often see that actually that person could be finding it a little bit hard. So in our client group, in our client group, in our um, WhatsApp group, especially after lockdowns and things, a lot of the dog walkers had found it difficult. And it meant that we could sit there and go, well, actually, I'm doing all right at the moment. I don't need to take on an extra dog and we can offer it to each other and really support each other. So I know if I said to the the WhatsApp group, you know what, I'm, I'm struggling a bit with this. I've, I'm, I'm very, very quiet at the moment. Then they can pass, pass jobs my way. Um, just last week, I met up with one of the girls because she was struggling with one of the dogs on, on a group walk with her. And it meant that I could give her tips and tricks and my assessment of the dog obviously i've only was with the dog for the hour but i could give what i would do in that situation um and that also means that that dog walker knows that actually she can call me whenever she wants i'm going to be there to be able to help her and giving up that one hour of my time that dog walker is going to be very happy to recommend me she's would be happy to pass my de my details over to her clients because she's seen how i work Working with your cheerleaders and thinking of them as cheerleaders rather than competition helps massively. Having, um, if I've seen a post online about, let's just say another, another dog walker and I've been able to phone that dog walker and be like, look, I've just seen X, Y and Z. It means that they're going to be able to get in there and diffuse that situation because we all know that the general public have all got a lot to say without knowing the facts, and then they can get on Facebook and have the little witch hunts. So being able to get there and say, so and so, I've seen so and so post, can you have a look? Means that they can get in there and diffuse the situation, handle it very quickly. It also means that when I know that that post is incorrect, I know full well that that post is not true, I can put my little, oh, why don't you speak to them? It really nicely diffused the situation. Oh, did you did you say anything? Um, just to help buy those few extra few extra moments for them. Um, 
also going back to the social media aspect of it there as well my my cheerleaders if they see a job on a you know when someone posts oh i need a dog trainer i know that my cheerleaders will get on there and post just as if i see someone that goes i need a behaviorist i'm going to get on there and i'm going to tag colin in that post making sure that you have your cheerleaders makes your life so much nicer in in what is quite a solitary role because we are out on our own we've got many hours traveling it can seem quite a lonely position sometimes but having that group there to network with to support each other is really really helpful um so when i was looking at the whole um cheerleaders and competition i know what i said about the um but we've got the networking side of it and how to support each other there. Um, but one place that I find it hugely beneficial for me, I know I touch, I've commented on a couple of posts recently, um, but I've suffered. Oh, Carly, brilliant, yes. And so um, our WhatsApp group, we we used to, pre-COVID pre times, meet up twice a year. So we'd have Christmas and summer. And it was a time that we could go out and have a drink together have a laugh and although you think oh it's not dog time it, nine out of ten times the conversation revolved around dogs what's going to happen when you've got a group of dog professionals together but it was so nice being able to go out let your hair down um, and have a drink together also it means that you've got your people there that are um, looking out for you um just back on the whatsapp group though just that's actually that's just reminded me if that's like, so i've got my notes here but like i'm waffling away and forgot what i was going to say um, I'm part of two WhatsApp groups and when I'm looking at cheerleaders and competition I am selective so there will be people and professionals out there that I can I can recommend their services but they're not people that I'll be friends with um, and then I've also got people that I can be friends with but I wouldn't actually recommend their services and um, being able to separate that professional relationship and that friendship is also really important so there's another whatsapp group that i'm part of which is a local group um i tend to mute that one quite a lot um because they don't have the same kind of ethics as what i do they don't have the same kind of professionalism as what i do and it's really important that we can have professional relationships but not always agree with them not always agree with what the other person um, does. It doesn't mean I'm going to be their best friend. It doesn't mean that I'm going to recommend their services all the time. But I don't need to get online and say anything about them. I don't need to cause arguments with them. Because all that's going to do is wind me up. It's not going to wind them up. They're probably actually going to go, this is a right laugh. Um, but the, all that's going to do is affect me negatively. Um, so that kind of almost brings me on to kind of the next thing that I was going to say um, about worry when we can when we're doing this this kind of role and we're on our own quite a lot it's very easy for it to affect your mental health um, it's very without you even realizing so some people on the post earlier would have seen me mention about the earplugs and um, so I can have certain noise sensitivities um, I've suffered with depression anxiety so me having my people around me, my support network, means that when I'm, right now I'm dealing with something, a, a case that's upset me, I can get on the phone to Katie, I can have my little rant and rave, I can cry if I need to, and it's done. I don't need to hold on to that and internalise that and then let that affect the rest of my work. We all know with our dogs that, we all understand about cortisol levels. We all understand the importance of self-care, the importance of having the correct outlets. But when it comes to ourselves, we don't really do that very often. We are really bad at putting out all this information for the dogs, but not actually applying it to ourselves. So we will look at our, I don't know if we're doing any sort of anything behavioural or a little bit more complex, even training. We're saying to our, our clients be your dog's cheerleader celebrate that with your dog let your dog know that they've done well don't set your dog up to fail 
Yet yeah, when don't put them in positions where you know that they're not going to do well. Whereas we can often do that to ourselves all the time. When we're getting into a little debate with some with someone which starts quite little and then ends up consuming your whole evening, the only person that's suffering is yourself. It's all well and good putting our views out there, but to actually get into the arguments that you didn't really need to have an argument about, that's only consuming your time. So when you have your cheerleaders, rather than your competition, you can voice something with them. I know that if I was to get on a post and I was getting a bit leery, Kate, you'd be the first one to message me and be like, Ona, wind your neck in. Getting a bit much now. Um, if I've got a client that's kind of pushing buttons, um, I know that I can send a message to her, send my email to her, and she knows exactly what words she is looking out for, just to make sure that I've not sneaked them in there. Um, and all, <laughs> she's looking out for those little phrases to go, yeah, I, I, I know that one. We'll take that one out, Una. Maybe you should word it this way. Having those people around you build you. So mine and Katie's business, they're quite similar. We offer slightly different services. So I do more training work. And Katie does boarding and daycare. I've got... Um, as team members that do exactly what I do but we're not in competition we're not in competition with each other we're each other's cheerleaders I want I really want like Tracy oh, and I was watching I want her to do well and she's blown me away with what she's achieved in the last year but I don't want her I don't want to be better than her I want her to do well I want to give her all the tools in her box so that she's the most amazing trainer because then she's an asset to the team. She is able to help more clients. I don't want the other trainers in the area, I don't feel the need to be so much better than them all because if I'm so much better than them all, then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put more pressure on myself. It's much better for me to go, yeah, do my best. or making sure that I'm up to date with everything and that I'm learning and that I'm learning from others. And then I can also pass jobs on. I can also collaborate with other professionals in the area, um, even down to things like treat providers. So um, we've got a lady who sells treats near us and she she's fantastic. So I know that I can say to my clients, on our, we pass her details over and she can message me and be like, oh, oh no, do you think this one's suitable? Do you think this treat's suitable? Do you think that one's, if she gets something new, She'll bring it my way and go, can you try all that and see what you think of that one? Um, hi, Sarah. Um, do you know what? It is true. So I would have burnt out 100%. I would have burnt out by now if I hadn't have had Katie and my team, Colin to guide me. There was a few stages when I was um, really struggling and I didn't know where to study, who to learn from. Um who to turn to if I was finding things difficult but having those people around you even like I say even down to the whatsapp group it lifts it so if I have we had a dog one, one day we was out on a walk I was one of my team was out on a walk now if I'm with a client um I'll always answer my work phone just in case it's like if my personal phone's on the side but my work phone's not because if one of my team call me I need to be there um and one of the dogs had managed to um take pull the long line out of their one of their team's hand no sorry the, the clasp had snapped um and he hadn't gone out of her sight but he was doing circles round her um and obviously she was worried so i phoned her i said right i'm on my way and i'd in that time i'd managed to message other the other what nearly 30 other people in the group and said that can some of you get down there please just to kind of corral him a little bit corral him whatever the word is a little bit just so that they could um make sure we didn't go and do a runner and then by the time I got there I walked over and I was like Betty this way and he just come running up and gave me a cuddle obviously you can imagine what the team member's face was like when that had happened because she was just like really after the stress you've just given me but having that network there of other dog professionals means that I wasn't driving like a lunatic on the way there putting myself in danger it meant that I wasn't having a complete and utter meltdown because I knew that other people were there trying to keep an eye and make sure that he was safe. Um, having that network around you, they're lifesavers. They really, really are. If I'm um, 
if I'm feeling really down, I can talk to them. Sometimes um, Colin will know that if I'm feeling down, because I won't talk to any of them like that much. So usually I'll get involved in posts, but sometimes I'm really quiet. Um, but in getting them to know you, so don't be afraid to open up to the people so that they know you, so that they know, actually, you don't need to keep on, when I'm like that, you don't need to keep on my case, because I will ask for the help when I need it. Sometimes I just need some time to myself to deal with things. The most so I was reading Carly's comment. The better trainers I collect with them, does it help? Because they've heard that. The better trainers. That's right. Um. So if we are, you'll see some trainers. You're right, Carly. You'll see some trainers out there that are very much an island. Um, and they don't want to ask for the help. So they're there on their own and they're, they're becoming overwhelmed and they're not able to work as well. But when you've got that network around you, you can contact other people. Carly's on the other side of the world to me right now. But I know if I said, Carly, can you help with this? Then she'll do what she can to help me. In fact, I've done that about this, about going on the, the live things as well. Messaging Carly, can you know how to do this? Um, having that there so that, you it that those little problems don't consume your whole day or your whole week. Um Ah, oh, thank you, Katie and Tracy. I just like I just think I like to treat people how I want to be treated. And that's the way it is, so I'm not gonna get on there and humiliate somebody else. I'm not gonna sit there and go, Oh, I need to take all this for myself, I need to rule the world. We're doing this because we love dogs. We're doing this because we love our job. Um, we're not doing this. We're not doing this for, to become millionaires. Because if we were, we're, we're in the wrong game. Um, so, the other thing that I wanted to touch on. Um, a bit more about the mental health. Um, and then I'm actually going to pass... It, I'm going to find a way to actually get Colin on screen so that he can help because the, the next bit really relates to him. Um, something that he's more experienced than what I am with this. Um, so, some of you will know I've suffered with mental health problems in the past. Um, you're right, Patricia, being able to pass jobs over to other colleagues is huge. Being able to get a second pair of eyes to look at something and say show them a video, what do you see in this? Because you might have something in your mind and go, mm, am I overthinking that? See what they think of it. See if, if, what their opinion is on it. How would they approach it? Maybe they've got an idea that you hadn't necessarily thought of. Um, and because, because if any of us sit there and go, well, I know it all, I've got all the answers. I've done all the courses. I've been doing this for years and years and years. That's the time when it is time to give up dog training and behaviour. That is the time to go, you know what? The minute you think that you know it all, time to go. He's had on a laptop. Ah, oh, can't see a screen share either. Ah, oh, can you see if Colin can log in on his phone? Liz, can you see if you can log in on the phone? Um, the day that we think that we know it all and that we know more than everyone else, that's the day that we need to stop. Um, and that goes for all aspects of working with dogs, probably any job, but working with dogs, because every day is a learning day. Oh, we are always learning more. Sheba, on your bed, darling. We're always learning more. And we can always learn from each other. So it's so important to build those relationships so that you can go and work with each other, that you can bounce off each other and learn from each other. Um. The little bit that I was going to mention about mental health. So, um, back in approximately 2007-ish, um, I was diagnosed. He said it keeps crashing on his phone. I was like, oh. um, I tell you what, let me get the laptop out and I'll see if we can log back in and do it that way. Uh, one second. So, 
that's loading up. Oh, I'll talk to you. So back in about approximately 2007, um, I was diagnosed with depression. Um, I was actually hospitalised quite a few times and some other mental illnesses as well. Um, I have borderline personality disorder. Um, and if I was to try and do this role without having my support network around me, I wouldn't last two seconds because it's very easy to take on far too much and get um, drown in it almost. You can almost drown in doing this um, because you want, there's so much to learn and it can become very overwhelming. And that paired with the fact that we're in quite a lonely job. Yes, we're always around others, but we have clients all the time, but it's not the same as being with your friends. Um, so I, and the dogs helped me learn a lot about my mental health. Um, so I learned about trigger stacking through the dogs. Um, it's called something else with humans, but essentially it's trigger stacking. I learned about my emotional bucket. I learned when it is time for me to say no. So you would have seen the post on the group when I turned around and said about the earplugs. Oh my God, lifesaver. Now, if someone, if they, I, I did, I just looked at it like a dog. I went, what do I do if this was a dog? Well, the first thing I'd do is eliminate the noise. I can't eliminate the noise. It would be wrong with me to eliminate my children. Um, even though sometimes they almost push me to it. But I thought, okay, earplugs. There we go. Put those on. Oh, there we go. Yay! Done it! Sorry, it's just adding him now. Um, so me, you're in! Eventually. <laughs> so, um, I'm just... I don't have... Did you manage to see it all? Or? Oh, I've got the majority. You carry on, girl. Okay. You're doing special. So, um, this earplugs thing, it was just a game changer. Me having the earplugs in meant that I could do the emails that I needed to do. And I got them done quickly. Now, if I didn't have those earplugs in today, nothing would have got done. I would have spent half a day moaning at them, going, be quiet, be quiet, I need to do this. And all that would have happened is I would have wound myself up. Um, and that can also go back to the network that I said about the, your cheerleaders. Because it can be as simple as Colin saying to me, you know, why are you overthinking that? Why are you stressing over that when you know the answer? Or me, I'll never forget the... Uh, first question on a course that, um, that I'd spent so long, it was when I was doing a course with canine principles and I was the first question and it really threw me. And I, I remember this massive long pause from him. I mean, him being like, so what do you think it's saying, Una? And then when I said it and he was like, well, why are you asking me? This is it. So sometimes just finally saying it out loud any problem that you're having this saying it out loud to another professional that gets it them listening and being able to voice what you're thinking and then be and and discussing it with them makes such a huge difference otherwise mm -hmm. i would have been just holding on to that and not sending that off and all that would have happened was that would have affected me and made sure that i couldn't do my job properly um so how do I cope with a men mental, some mental health problems and still do my job? Um, firstly, is when to know that we're just going to sack that off and go, that's not important. So this, I wanted to, in this um, chat, I wanted to do a little, um, a couple of little graphics that we all know the dog trigger stacking ones. And I wanted to put the human versions in there because we're, as I said, we're all well and good saying about the dogs and we know how to do it for dogs but not for ourselves and then it just comes to my mind and went is this even important is this actually do i need to add this in there or are people listening to me speaking and knowing when it was time to go don't need to do that rather than stressing myself out so much because i wanted to make my presentation look really nice i was comparing myself to other people and it's knowing when to go, I don't need to do that. I'm my own person. I do my okay. own thing. And I work in the way that that's me. I don't need to try and be them. Um, also, on that one more thing on that, before I'm going to pass over to Colin, um, 
when I said about the cheerleaders and not competition, when you build these relationships with people, um, other people do exactly the same job as what you do. They understand what you're going through better than anybody else. So when I phoned Colin a while ago and said that I was really, really upset over a, a dog that was possibly going to be rehomed. By the way, Colin, they've decided to keep hold of the dog. Um, <laughs> and we had tried, me and Katie had tried everything that we could to try and keep them together because this dog is amazing. But the circumstances just weren't, it didn't all plan out very well, but the owner has realized how amazing this dog is um, and how between us, we will help and support them in whatever way they can. But I found that out at the beginning of the day and I had a whole day of lessons in front of me and I was really upset. But being able, me telling that to my partner or to my other friends, they don't get it. They're not, they don't have the same kind of interest as what we do. They don't know that we've, we're emotionally invested into someone else's dog that we yeah. don't hold all the decisions for. That's not an easy thing to do. But being able to speak to other professionals and go, this is how I'm feeling, and then go, oh, this is what we can do. This is what we can offer. But most importantly, just them going, you know what? I understand. I understand that. Um, so I'm just going to check. So, oh yeah, you're right, Liz. Not being made like feel like an idiot for asking a question. So, um, one one thing that I know that many people in the industry will wonder is, how do you get into contact with these other professionals? How do you get that network to start with? Um, I don't even, Katie, how did we even actually start talking? I don't really remember. I remember the first time you came around my house. Yeah, I, I remember the first time that I went to Katie's house, but I don't actually remember how, the, how it started. But either way, she's tried getting rid of me ever since, but it just don't happen. <laughs> and a bit like, I remember the first time I spoke to Colin, I was on a dog walk and he phoned me up and I'm thinking, why is he phoning me? Like, I don't even know who this man is. Why is he phoning me? Um, and we got talking and then he'd spoken a couple more times and he'd come out to help me on a job. And then he said about me joining his class and me being, oh, you messaged me and she did I actually, Katie? That was very professional of me. <laughs> did I really? <laughs> um, now I'll just go, Katie, can I borrow the dogs, please? <laughs> um, and Colin had said about me joining his class and, and, and it just meant about me joining the class and I was so flattered. I was like, oh my God, another professional wants to work with me. And it was like, that was the moment when I was like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm legit. Like I'm a proper dog trainer now. Other people want to work with me. Um, and that was so huge. That was such a nice feeling for someone when you're in this, what I was saying, lonely industry for someone to reach out and go, hi, can I help you? Can I, I want to help you be the best that you can be. When I've met other dog walkers that have just started out, I remember one of our group, um, she used to work in a school that my son goes to, used to go to, my daughter goes to now. Um, she had just started out and we took her on board and said, look, come on, we will help you. We will help fill you up with dogs. We will help show you the right ways to go. Um, so in it, it can be difficult sometimes when you want to build those networks, but reaching out to people just to say hi i'm here um i remember you coming into the pub after that chat with colin and you were so excited <laughs> i don't i don't even remember liz i don't even remember how we really met oh oh you've done that um you've done the, the uh, fancy dress competition didn't you at the pub and i went to come and judge it and then when i done the halloween one and i got the well fancy rosettes um anyway having that network there and, and just reaching out and saying hi and how you don't necessarily realize how just that one one conversation with that one person connects you to so many other places so i wouldn't be here talking to you now if i didn't know colin i, I wouldn't be here talking to you now because it's colin that invited me here um been studying with the iscp i certainly wouldn't have studied with the isc been studying with the iscp if it wasn't for colin um I was interested in scent work 
helped me get onto those courses as well. Um, I wouldn't have made such a big name for myself locally with dog walking if it wasn't for Katie. Knowing that there's other dog walkers in the area that they were lovely, weren't they? I really wanted one of them rosettes, uh, Sarah. Um, I know that there's other dog walkers in the area that wouldn't have done so well if we hadn't have helped them because they would have struggled. And there's also been other dog walkers in the area that have been going for a couple of years and they don't do well and they don't have the support network around them simply down to the fact that they don't want to take time to build positive working relationships what they want to do is keep working in competition so they're the people that them themselves struggle while the rest of us uh, we're passing jobs between each other if if i was to turn around and say to colin you know what colin i'm really really quiet with training people are like, oh don't worry take some of this <laughs> If I know, if I'm going, if I have a bad day, if I, if, I wake, if I woke up tomorrow and said, you know what, I can't face this today. Colin, could you cover that one for me? Because it is an important one. Give them the number and I'll be a go. Um, so Colin, would you be able to talk, or whatever you're gonna talk about, um, but explain a little bit about the vets and how we can network with the vets? Definitely. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Can everyone else okay, hear well, me? Well, what I was going to say, and you didn't tell the story correct, um, <laughs> when I actually mentioned you coming to join us at classes, it was about eight months later before I actually got an answer. Because yeah, I thought you was joking. I didn't think, <laughs> I didn't think it was being serious. I'll turn it up. I yeah. didn't think it was being serious. Yeah, it was serious. But yeah, eight months later, you came and joined us, and it's been great. Um, and we might as well mention Tracy, Sarah. And, and Lizzie um, also have come and joined us since. Um, I missed a great chunk of this because I don't normally come on the phone because the phone tends to break a lot. But <clears throat> I'm pretty sure you covered um, having um, a good, strong network of good people around us because um, it will help you to thrive and prosper a lot quicker. People that can support you, people you trust, people that trust you, um, people that will always have your back but what's also important is that we should always be authentic because without being authentic people will see through you very very quickly so being open and honest is very it is the way to go anyone that knows me one of the main things that i thrive to do is to support other people and bring other people into the network simply because i can't on my own or loads of us can't on our own run the dog industry and it's no point having some knowledge and experience if you're not willing to share it and pass it on because at the end of the day we're not always going to be around and at some point it, the, 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 the positive side of dog training has to keep going so I always then look at keep your enemies away and keep your best friends in the industry close because they're the ones that you're going to be able to fall back on when things are not going so well um una's already mentioned it so i'm not going to go too deep into that she's mentioned the likes of katie um who is awesome the, there are quite a few of you that are not obviously up on here but then there is the names i just mentioned like lizzie sarah etc etc so having people that you can trust I think mean, people that you know, if something's going wrong in your business, they're going to come and help and support you and not ruin your business, yeah? Because at the end of the day, for me, it's not about competition because there are enough bloody dogs out there <laughs> for the whole world to survive in running a business. Especially after lockdown. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, I mean, very, very quickly when we start talking about vets, one person can post up on Facebook saying they're looking for a trainer. A billion, um, what do you call it, recommendations can go in. And I can guarantee you, whether my name, that person calls me or not, other people will from that one post. There are so many dogs to go around the whole of the United Kingdom for every single person that's involved. So it's time we started to pull together, work together, yeah, and learn together because no one, no matter how much experience or how many years I've been in the business, every single day I'm learning. And 
if I get another book delivered by Amazon, I won't have to move out because there won't be enough space. <laughs> you know what you just said there, Colin, about um, having enough dogs to go around and the way that we all learn and have um, the same um, ethics. Um, it's really funny, isn't it, how we've got clients that have been to you and then to me or me and then to you. And the way that it's so funny when someone goes, well, Una said, nah, 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 nah. and Colin's thinking to himself, I know full well that she didn't, or someone's gone, uh, and Colin did this, and I'm thinking, no, he wouldn't. I know exactly how he works. <laughs> and actually, Colin said X, Y, and Z, and you picked out of that Y. You didn't yeah. pick out the X, and you didn't pick out the Z. You picked out that one thing. So having those people that you work with and knowing exactly how they work. It's like when, um, I was saying earlier, Colin, I don't know if you call, you know when um, you've got a dog that does a down, and you go, I oh, know Una taught them that one because it would do a chin down and not just a down. <laughs> or when someone holds the lead properly, and I think you yeah. do the same, Colin, because you're holding your lead and your treat pouch properly. <laughs> it's amazing how these little things we do as trainers can be spotted elsewhere. Because I know when a client's been to you, because I say, have you met Una? They'll say, yeah, because she taught us how to do this. Definitely, yeah. So yeah, you, you you know we get to know each other quite well, uh, and the most important thing as well here is we should never be stressed about clients because clients are the biggest reason why most people become stressed and depressed. Yeah. So we got to want to go to work, do the work, go home, switch off. Whether they're listening to us or taking our advice or not. Don't take it personally. Don't take it to heart because it will beat you. They will go to another trainer and still not do take the advice or still listen. Um, one thing I certainly do is when I leave a client's house, I'm switched off. Um, when I go to classes, I find it a bit more difficult to switch off leaving classes because there's just something special about classes. Yeah, um, you know, you go home, you can't switch off, and you can't wait to get back into the the, the class, the class setting. But at some point, we must switch off for our mental health. Okay. How much time we got left? I don't um, think it's much. We've got 10 minutes. That, oh, it's gone well quick. Oh. Has anyone got oh. any questions that they wanted to ask? Well, Colin's going to talk to us about a bit about the vets and <laughs> how to um, liaise there and get your okay. name in there. Um, so if anyone had any questions they wanted to ask, do type away. And we'll have a look at them in a bit. I think one of the biggest things in the industry for, and I'm not just talking dog trainers here or behaviourists, this includes dog walkers, and groomers, or anyone that has a connection with dogs where you're, the dog's in your charge at some point of every given day or some parts of the week, where you may have to go to the vets, you may have to use a vet, you may have to phone the vet, and it becomes very difficult because vets are not the easiest places to work with. They can be very difficult. Yeah? It took me a while to break down the barriers. But one of the ways I broke down the barriers wasn't by sending in my cards or sending an email. I just walked straight through their doors yeah, and spoke to the people at the reception. They're the first port of call. And it took me, like people mentioned mentioning this particular vets, Four visits. The first visit was very frosty. <laughs> very frosty indeed. We don't want trainers, we don't use cars, blah, 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 bike. So I thought, ah, oh, I've got to go back. So I went back. Luck would have it on the second occasion on going back that the staff had changed. I think they changed the lunch breaks, they switch around and do all different things. And this lovely lady said, yes, I will pass it on to the vet and let them know that you're a trainer and let them know that you want to do some work for us etc etc as luck would have it i was invited to go back um, on going back i was invited to do some putty putty puppy pu puppy classes but i didn't like the name puppy classes pu pu puppy parties i should say yeah because puppy parties it, it's sort of a, Sounds like all these puppies are going to come with their cakes and their blow up tweezers and what have you and go you know, have a free for all. So I quickly changed that to puppy advice workshops. But one of the beautiful things I found was is that 
Vets are very, well, it's not beautiful. One of the things I found was that vets are very difficult to work with because it's either their way or no way. So you have to learn how to be able to listen. Sometimes let things go through there and out there and let all your skills do the, do the talking. Once the first party was over, as far as they were concerned, it was a party, but as far as I was concerned, it was a class workshops, it started to take fold because I was then leaving my business cards, then putting up the, the um, flyers, being able to also go speak to other vets because by that time, these vets had told those vets that this guy's pretty good. Now, basically what I'm trying to say, guys, don't be afraid to walk into your local vet. Don't be afraid to pick up the telephone and have a word with the people in the reception. Don't be afraid to send that email because you never know what can come from that one email. It may not be that local vet because one thing I've also learned, there are locums and people, vets, vet staff do hold a lot of information. So when they were working elsewhere and someone says to them, do you know where I can use a dog trainer? You'd be surprised how quick they'll pick up the phone, phone the other branch. Can you have a look on that board, what that dog trainer's name is, please? Yeah. And then they'll pass it to you. Yeah. The other thing the way is walkers, dog walkers. Do you guys have um, good liaison with your local vets? If not, start doing so. Because where do you take your dogs if a dog is injured on a walk? So I know for yeah. us, when we've had it, um, we just go to the nearest vets. Um, okay. And if any of the get like our team know that if, I don't know, it could be miles away, it, I could be further away, but they just take that dog to, if there was an accident, to the nearest vets they can get to, I sort it over the phone. Okay. So, but, and and that's, that's the rules that we have, it's just straight to nearest vets. And we have a vet release form. Okay, but it, would that be the norm for other dog walkers would you know <laughs> well so they're very they're very very different so there can be some dog walkers out that don't even have contracts so when someone yeah and um, when someone and i know that katie's like this because she helped me do all my stuff and she also <laughs> uses the same software that i use um so our clients have to fill out a whole profile for themselves and also for the dog um so that we have all their history um, we have everything about them. We have emergency contact details. Um, <laughs> they sign a release that we can we can act as um, on their behalf. Uh -huh. um, and it has happened just before when we've had, of course it can happen to your dog walkers. Um, one of our girls actually saved, very recently, saved on the dog's life because they'd had a reaction. Um, so he had a reaction to something that no one knows what he had, but he had a seizure when he was out. So the girls would just take them to the nearest vets. Nearest or, vets. Which... Or us. They first be they <laughs> vets or call us and we get someone there immediately. Which in an emergency a, a vet should deal with. Yeah. But any some vet. can be quite yeah, any, any vet, vet should be able to deal with. Yeah, we have yeah. we've just gone to the nearest vets. If it's pet obviously if it's emergency, nearest vets, it doesn't matter. Uh, and when we look at, you know, I'm not just looking at dog walkers or, or people running dog walking businesses. What about groomers? You see, so if we were to build a, a, a good, strong network of good people that believe we, that have the same ethics and start to look at how we can pave the way into the local vets, how we can pave the way to using certain facilities. Uh, by working universally, constructively together. That's the way forward in this industry, but there's a great big but here. Most people don't want to work with others simply because they feel that you might take their jobs. Uh, they feel like you might know more than they do, uh, which tends to be one of the biggest things, problems in this industry. If someone knows more than me, I'm latching onto them simply because they've got lots to teach me. Why do you think you haven't got And after 28 years in this industry... <laughs> Why do you think you haven't got <laughs> At the end of the day... <laughs> see, learning is a two-way process. Um, it's not that you just learn from me. It has to work the other way. Because there's lots that you do 
that I hadn't thought about or even, uh, what's the word, or even tried. Yeah. But once you look at other trainers, you think, yeah, I love that. Wow. I want to nick that. Yeah. You take it and then you can tweak it to how it fits in with the way that you work. You know, I mean, being authentic is also about not just stealing other people's work for the sake of stealing it. Because what that tells me is you don't have a toolbox. Yeah. Your toolbox is always going to be filled up with what other people have got. Yeah. Um, tweak it. Be creative. Make it your own. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure every dog, dog trainer and behaviourist that I've come across, somewhere along the lines, I've used something they've done and vice versa. Um, but being authentic about it and tweaking it to make it your own is the way to go. But if you're just going to go along and just look at other people, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, you can't be authentic. You're just, I can't see you're stealing people's work because you're not stealing. You're just copying. But are you really copying? Probably not. But you're, you're not also, being yourself. And also with that, you're going to burn out quickly with that because when it's not something that's yours, you're constantly yeah. working so when you've got your own way sometimes um i've heard other people go oh what did you do there and i have to think back and go i don't actually know like it becomes so natural to you and i'll go uh, remind me what bit um because you, you just do it you don't even think um it's even how how i lure or how i teach certain positions um so having your own way of doing things is so so important um colin no, what, We've got a couple of questions here. Um, if someone's had mm -hmm. a shit experience with a trainer, <laughs> love it, love it, Carly. Thank you. For... See, that's the kind of word that Katie would have gone, I've seen that word, so I'm not going to say it out loud. That's the kind of word that Katie's like, I'm looking out for that in a message. Um, if someone's mm -hmm. had a they will spread the word. That's, that's right. If, if, if people have had a bad experience um, with another trainer, they will start spreading minds about them and sometimes it's important to get in there and diffuse mm -hmm. so colin i would be very surprised if you hadn't had gone to a client and gone oh i didn't think much of it enough i could have gone to a client and they've gone well i didn't like the way you done this and then it will make me laugh because i'm like mate i'm doing it exactly the same way the only difference mm -hmm. is i might word it a little bit differently and then when it goes in and i go away and you think oh i should listen to colin in the first place because then it's just come here and told me exactly the same thing. Yeah. Um, Patricia said, what if another business is already in with the vets? Is it best to step away? That That's an interesting one because it doesn't matter how many... Okay, there are one particular vets I do a lot of work for and I can guarantee you they've got several, several trainers already in behaviourist behind their little front bit. But they will even tell you they get feedback from their clients. And then they start to sift through those trains and behaviors that they have. And then they don't use the ones that don't get good feedback. So it doesn't matter. It, I wouldn't say step away. What's important is let your business do the talking. Because if you're good, you'll always, always get business. Um, and if you're not, you're not going to get it. Regardless of how authentic you may be, if you're not good at what you do, you're not going to get the business. You will get it initially, but then you'll lose it along the way. So I wouldn't step away. Um, and Liz said, totally, there is definitely isn't a strong network of groomers in this area because some of them have got a bit of a god, god, uh, god complex. Um, no, he's laughing, but some of them have come on. It's like certain, if you go on to the, remember, remember I told you about the two, we've got our WhatsApp group with another WhatsApp group. <laughs> They're the same in the other WhatsApp group. Um, in the area, to, there is really a handful I know to talk to and recommend. Liz, do you know what? Speak to them. Even if it's a high. Or one thing that we will do next time, when we're all allowed to, um, what we'll make a real effort to do is Katie and myself. So this used to be Carly's thing as well. Carly used to do it all, but I know that Katie Hello. and myself will um, make sure that we make get the groomers invited as well, because that these events, it was twice a year, we used to go out and have a drink. Um, we can invite the other groomers to it so you can get to know each other, because putting that name to a face is huge. I met um, Sarah, um, Sarah Mooney, 
Um, I don't know if you know her, Colin. She's over in Walthamstow. I met her at one of the um, one of the things, and I used to see her walking all the time, but never actually stopped to say hello because we both were reactive dogs. <laughs> it was never a good idea to stop and say hello. Actually, when we met at one of the do's that we had, we used to walk together quite often. Um, but it meant that we can talk to each other and we can bounce off each other. And um, so next time we have one of those events, Liz, we'll make sure that we get some more groomers involved in it but i would just say if you are fully booked and you can't take a dog on for grooming the best way to actually stop kind of break down the barriers is to say to so and so look i'm fully booked this week is there any chance you could take this one this week for me um and that's the best way for you to break down them barriers and for that other groomer to realize she's not after nicking my clients because they can often feel exactly that same way as what you are because if yeah. When you're thinking, oh my God, they've got more clients than me, not realising that actually all those pictures they've posted this week, they're grooms that have been stacked up and stacked up over the last weeks and months. Doesn't mean they've done them all this week. Yeah. So having, having breaking down those barriers and just talking to them and saying, look, could you cover this one for me? Could you, this one's a little bit out of my area. You don't know. I wouldn't even dream of taking on a training case over um, certain other areas that are nearer Collins than mine. I don't need to. Okay, yeah. I don't need to be taking on that job. I don't need to be going in the traffic. I can just say, Colin, do you want to take that one, Colin? I do it all the time. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> Why not come up? And I'm like, oh, it's le and do you know what? It's only 15 minutes from my house, but I'm like, ah, oh, no, he's I closer. don't get that. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I've never, I've never got that one when you've done things like, Carl, can you do this? But isn't it? it's only two minutes away from me. But yeah, it's near you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going, you know what? I look at, and going back to that managing your mental health and yeah, yeah. managing what you're taking on I yeah. don't want to be taking on that well yeah I can take on one extra client and yeah it might only be 10-15 minutes in the opposite direction that's stress that's stress I don't actually need to take on when Colin's closer Colin take that one I mean, at the end of the day you do what you, you, you do uh, if you don't feel like not doing it don't force yourself to do it i mean coming back to which i think is really important although we have people that may feel a certain way or they may not want to join the group right now we shouldn't really knock them because you don't know what's really going on for them um, and sometimes there's this one thing called um, imposter syndrome that makes people not want to get too close to others because they feel they may be found out so it's really good when we bring people close, regardless of who they are, what they're doing, how they do it, and show them that this is the way to do things if you want to feel better. Yeah? Give them that option, give them a choice, to, and if they don't want to follow, they don't have to. Yeah? Um, I think there's too much separation that divides us. Um, and, and just because someone down the road does something or, or believes certain things in a different world or dif different ethics to myself. It doesn't mean to say, I don't want to be your mate. Come and let's be mates. Let's see how we can work together. Uh, and let's see how we get along with the clients because at the end of the day, we're there for the dogs. And it's that simple, whether you're a groomer, whether you're working in the vets, whether you're a trainer, behaviorist, a walker, we all have one common denominator and that's the dogs. Definitely. Um, so Sarah said, um, I don't work well with others because I don't think people can handle or understand my mental health issues. Um, Sarah, I learned to, first of all, accept my mental health issues and go, you know what, they're a part of me. And that's what makes me me. Um, and I know that certain people will laugh and I've done it, I've done it in class with Colin before when apparently a client said something on my face. And I, I can see sometimes when Colin goes, I can see that look going, oh, don't answer, don't answer. It'll be something like um, a Julius canine harness. And I'm like, well, that's just set me right off. Or um, I don't know, someone using a flexi lead. And I'm like, right, here we go, lecture time. And Colin's thinking, for God's sake, why did they come in with that? <laughs> but having, I see my mental health, and it took me a long time to do this, but I, see how my mental health has actually helped me build my business so i built this 
from nothing. I literally had nothing. The very first course that I got, my mum bought it for me as a birthday present. I started this whole thing. Um, I learned to drive only because of this job. I wanted to do this job, so that's why I learned to drive. Um, my van that I've got, I worked that off from doing pet sits for a client. Um, I wanted it so badly that nothing was going to get in my way. There is no way on earth something was going to get in my way. And if I, it didn't matter how long it took me to do it, and I saw my little goals and each step. So my next one is when I pass my ISCP. That's my next one. Um, that I know I'm like, yes. Um, we've got little goals along the way. Um, Tracy does training now. And then my, one of my other ones is one of my other dog walkers that I want her to start doing a little bit of training. I set myself little targets, okay? And I genuinely don't care too much what other people think of me because I'm doing what makes me happy. I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not hurting any dogs. If someone hasn't liked some information that I've given them, not my problem. I don't, it doesn't matter if they don't like what I've said um, because I will only ever speak the truth. So I don't have to go to bed at night and th overthink something. Um, also, in terms of mental health, one thing that helped me understand it so much was dog stuff. Because a lot of it isn't explained to you from psychologists and psychiatrists. But understanding dog stuff helped me understand trigger stacking. Well, I could talk to you about that in my sleep because I understand it very well because I know what I get like. Hence my earplugs post. Um, understanding how to switch off. So I know that Colin has his um, Game of Thrones and his TV shows. And he's called The Midwife. Told me that one earlier in downtown, have <laughs> Down. <laughs> I know they all think you're cool. <laughs> Not anymore, down to Navi Colin. Um, oh, I just reminded me, we've got that Mrs. Mock photo of you as well. Um, <laughs> um, knowing when it is time to relax, okay, and knowing what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. So, and having those cheerleaders around you that can turn around and go, like when Colin went to me a while ago, you're a bit stressed at the moment. When you've got your cheerleaders around you, they mm -hmm. know you and they know when you're acting a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, or if I've come into class and I've got a face like thunder. And the first, <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing Colin does, right, right, what happened? Absolutely. Um, if I need to call Tracy and be like, so and so and so and have done this, and then, and kicking off. Or, or if Tracy has gone on to a job and she's gone, well, they haven't done their homework and this, that and the other. But having those people that you can vent to. I can get on the phone to Katie and, well, the language is atrocious. But I can get on the phone to Katie and just list it, list it, list it. And she's there to listen. And then she might get in and join in with me. And we can have a right old rant together. I mean, we've, we've decided that we're going to um, set off together and have a little cottage down, down, the, down a lane with dogs that bark at everyone as they go past. And we're going to be those miserable old women in the cottage, that's going to be us too. <laughs> um, what did Lisa say? I'm the world's worst for doing way too much and taking on myself on. Oh, do you know what? It is such a lovely community, isn't it? Um, and it is what you make of it. And it can, when you're getting into the dog world, it can seem like, oh my God, there's this person and there's that person. And they've done this and they've competed there. And, <laughs> but there's so much more to it than that. And the thing that I take away most is firstly that I'm happy. I've never, ever, ever been happier than I am now. Um, and secondly, my dog family. My dog family means the world to me. Um, so, Tracy, enough for end. My goal is just to do another end of the unit. Uh, that's it, Tracy. Do you know what? Just one little bit at a time. One unit at a time and you get there. And also, having faith in yourself. Because if you can deal with Buster and Boise, mate, you can do anything. If I pick up the phone, I don't know if you ask. Yeah, exactly. If you don't laugh in front of him, you'll sit there and go, what's wrong? God, Liz just said, <laughs> if she picks up the phone and, and, and she's not laughing on the phone to you, you'll ask, what's wrong? See, that's the beauty of getting to know each other. And the, our little team, they all know me. They know I've got the ump, yeah, because I'm 
grumpy. Um, if I'm speaking to Lizzie on the phone and Lizzie's not laughing, because the first thing Lizzie does is ha ah. ha ha. And if I don't make that little laugh, okay, what's wrong? What's up? Because there's something wrong. And if we don't get to know each other, then we will never know when we need support or, or when someone just needs that arm around them. So it's really good when you've got people that you know so well and you know when they're pulling the wool over your eyes because they're not really, there's something not right. I mean, Una walks into the class sometimes and I go, wow, what's wrong with you? And another night she can walk in and I go, yeah, she's cool. Yeah? Yeah. So it's just good to know each other. How much, how much time no, we got No, I've just looked. We're, um, we're actually gone over. Went over by 10 minutes. Surprise, surprise. It's like, when have I ever done a class and I finish on time? My class is always go <laughs> over. <laughs> if you're going to ever go to work with Una, <laughs> please bear in mind, you ain't going home or she ain't going to finish on time. Because sometimes I'm looking at it, Una, you're half an hour over. All the puppies are waiting to go into class. Oh, oh, oh. And Listen, the clients always get value for money. Ah, <laughs> they sure always do. Turn over. We're always giving them that bit extra. <laughs> There's half a queue down once in High Street waiting for their lessons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I know if I'm at work, I haven't got to come in and go, hey, man, she did this yeah. and he did that. Or someone's turning yeah. the telly up too loud. Right. Thank you for watching, everybody. I've really, really enjoyed this. And any, if you want, really to, if, by the way, if anyone was watching this um, and wanted to reach out about their mental health or just wanted to have a rant and go, this person's annoyed me and I just need to go and call the whole world of X, 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 just do it. And very quickly also, if anyone um, watches the replay and you're thinking about entering the dog industry and you don't know how to, send me a PM. Right, lovely to be here. Bye.